Welcome to the Independent Schools Equity and Access Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event. My name is Daisha and I will be your facilitator for today. We have some fantastic schools here to speak with you, but before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. First, your camera and microphone are off, so our presenters will not be able to see or hear you. However, you can use that Q&A button on your menu to type questions to our presenters at any time. If you have questions for, for a specific school, it, it's helpful if you can list that school's name in your question there, but they'll be able to respond to you directly. This is one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website for any additional um, sessions you're interested in attending today. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and it will be available at strivescan.com slash Westtown. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, St. John's College. All right. Um, so I'm from St. John's College and St. John's College is unlike any other college because we don't have majors. We have two campuses, one located in Annapolis, Maryland, the other in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Every student studies the same program and graduates with a bachelor in arts, bachelor of arts in the liberal arts. We are a great books program, which means we read the great books of the Western canon and discuss them in seminar style classrooms. I know that you might think that a great books program means we only do philosophy and like English literature, but we have a rigorous mathematics and laboratory science program as well. Um, we teach you how to ask questions and think critically. We also have some summer programs for underclassmen called Summer Academy and Summer Seminars, where you will be able to immerse yourself in our program and get to know the school and be part of that social life. We also have a graduate institute program for um, teachers and anyone interested in that we offer in both the Western canon as well as in Eastern classics. For financial aid, we of course um, give financial aid through merit-based and need-based scholarships. And you can apply through that through the FAFSA, a CSS profile if you're an international student. And um, your application to St. John's serves as your application for merit-based scholarships. So if you have any other questions about our program, feel free to ask or questions about admissions, student life, or what happens after graduation. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, St. John's College. Our next presenter is University of Toronto. Okay, I'll just share my screen here. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is V2, like the letter and the number, and I'm part of the recruitment team here at the University of Toronto. Thank you so much for joining me today. As you might know, U of T is a network of unique communities at the heart of a dynamic and diverse region there really is no better place to be. So I'm gonna take a few minutes here to explore how our students can mix and match programs to build unique degrees and review some admissions basics. The University of Toronto is Canada's top ranked university and Canada's flagship university for research and discovery. We're ranked in the world's top 20 year after year in part because our campuses attract the best and brightest from all over the world. A lot of people know that insulin was discovered at the University of Toronto, but did you know that stem cell research started here too? The world's first nerve transplant, the world's first electronic pacemaker, and the world's first treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma. These are just a few of U of T's many contributions. This legacy of innovation is driven by the connections we have with each other and with our neighborhoods and communities all across the greater Toronto area. The BBC once ranked Toronto as the world's most diverse city, and while there are a lot of contenders, we're definitely up there. In fact, half of Toronto's population was born outside of Canada and speaks languages other than English. The city is safe, clean, delicious, which is one of my favorite parts, and has something for everyone. U of T itself is actually older than the city of Toronto, meaning that all of this wonderful diversity has grown up all around us. In fact, U of T was even founded before the country of Canada in 1827, but other communities have called these lands home for far, far longer, and we wish to acknowledge the land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is still home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. 
Our central location has helped us to grow and expand to three campuses, all within an hour of each other, offering the same top quality education. When you graduate, you'll earn the same U of T degree. The campus you choose makes no difference. To the west, you'll find U of T Mississauga, which is about a half hour from the downtown Toronto campus. It's a mid-sized campus with around 16,000 students. U of T Mississauga offers programs in arts, science, and business, along with unique joint programs with Sheridan College. U of T St. George is our founding campus right at the heart of downtown Toronto with 35,000 undergraduate students and a wonderful mix of Gothic buildings and brand new glass and steel towers. U of T St. George is home to our five faculties, including the Faculty of Arts and Science and its seven colleges. U of T Scarborough is our third campus. It's also a mid-sized campus with about 15,000 students. In addition to offering programs in the arts, science and business, U of T Scarborough is our co-op campus and is a great place for students to learn best by doing. It's vital to us that every U of T student has not just a home base, but a team to support you and to cheer you on. Each of our campuses is home to a wide range of supports and our students take full advantage of these services. So much so that 91% of first year students move on to second year, which is a higher rate than our provincial average. U of T students thrive because they're in charge of their own futures. When you start your degree at the University of Toronto, you can mix and match programs, certificates, and co-curriculars to build an experience that captures your unique passions and personality. We offer hundreds of programs and thousands of courses. Our students can personalize their degrees by combining majors, minors, specialists, and certificates in different fields. We're all about choice. And while certain specialized programs are unique to a campus, many of our programs are offered on all three campuses. So students can choose the setting they prefer. There are many ways to tailor your degree and you can choose career oriented option, global options and student life to help complement your studies. So if being a part of Canada's number one university sounds fantastic, how do we get you here? While I can't cover the admissions requirements for every single program in the short time that we have here, I really encourage you to have a look at all of our online resources where you'll find all the answers and easy ways to connect with us. In general, we look for strong academic results in the last two years of high school, along with specific prerequisite courses, depending on the program. No matter what program you're applying to, though, all of our applicants are automatically considered for merit-based awards, you can learn more about our largest scholarship, the Pearson Scholarship, by visiting the site on the screen here, or our Awards Explorer by check, to check out all of our awards. Thank you again for your time today. Don't forget to drop by our discover.u Toronto website, where you'll find tours, webcasts, and on-demand content from your target campus or program, and where you can book an appointment with a recruiter one-on-one -on -one like me, and I'll put that link into the chat so you can sign up directly there. Thank you. Thank you, University of Toronto. Our next presenter is Skidmore College. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for having uh, a few minutes to, to take a listen about Skidmore College. I will share my screen here. And uh, what I will do is just kind of start out a little bit with what Skidmore is about and where we are located. So Skidmore College is in upstate New York. We are in the great town of Saratoga Springs. Uh, we are a campus of about 2,600 students. We call ourselves a small liberal arts community. This view of campus here, you will also see that we've got um, the Adirondack Mountains right in our back door. So we're a very um, eclectic outdoor campus as well, very residential. Um, if you scan that QR code there on the left side, that will open up a big brochure for you. So feel free to do that as well. You will find that we are three hours north of New York City and about three hours west of Boston. So being able to get to us is uh, sometimes uh, a really important part for students. You can fly into the Albany Airport. The Amtrak station is right here in Saratoga as well as the Greyhound bus. And one of the things that sets us apart from some great other small liberal arts colleges in the Northeast 
is the town of Saratoga, which is a town of about 30,000 people that gets to be about 90,000 in the summer. We are very big in horse racing um, in the town, but have a great culture uh, in town. And it's only about a 15 minute walk into town for students. So you become part of the Skidmore community, but also part of the larger Saratoga community as well. A fantastic college town. One of the things that's really important about our campus is not only our diversity of where we are from, but also uh, where we, um, our, our kids are from all over the US as well as a great international population as well. 15% of our students are first gen, 26 to 28% of our students are domestic students of color and the international population ranges between 10 and 13% on a yearly basis. Uh, we also find that clubs and intramurals are, clubs are a very big part of our life. The picture there on the right is our club fair, and I'll go into that in just a second. The curriculum, uh, we want you to explore. The first, uh, first year seminar is a first uh, semester seminar that you will take that will open you up not only to critical thinking, but also your advisor, your peer mentor, and a great group of 15 other students. Big majors for us, business, English, studio art, psychology, biology. We're in the midst of building our Center for Integrated Science. Minors are also a very big part of our community as well. Two thirds of our students will either double major or major in minor. So if you're a student who isn't really sure what you wanna do, feel free to do that. But you will also find that um, students that can go into pre-professional tracks such as uh, pre-professional in dance, theater, education, uh, exercise science, and a few more. Average class size is about 16. So being able to have those faculty uh, student relationships are a very big part of who we are. Beyond the classroom, we want you to be a global citizen. So civ civic engagement, collaborative research. Uh, not only are we a small liberal arts college, but we are very big into research. And uh, that is a big part of a lot of different departments on our campus. Studying abroad, of course, during the pandemic has been a little bit different, but we do have great international population uh, abroad programs, over 120 different programs. Uh, we even have 27 students in London right now that study for the first semester of their first year. So many different ways to travel abroad while you come to Skidmore. D3 Athletics, our kickoff today for our Pack the Rank ice hockey team, as well as the basketball uh, sports center is in full bloom right now, 19 different varsity sports. Uh, but we also have very, very vibrant community when it comes to clubs and intramural sports. So over 120 different clubs, uh, performance-based clubs, the outing club is a very big club on our campus. Uh, so if you're a student who wants to be involved in many different things or be a student athlete, uh, Skidmore might be a place that you wanna continue to research. Campus life, we are a residential campus. So 90% of our students live right here on campus. Those two pictures there on the left are the upperclassmen apartments, which are phenomenal, and our dining hall, uh, which is like a giant food court. Uh, so we have been ranked very high in uh, college dining as well. So we find that that campus life and that residential feel makes you feel very connected with your, your collaborative environment here with your students as well as your faculty. Sustainability, obviously being uh, the part of the world that we are, we wanna make sure that we're being good to ourselves and be, be good to our planet. So all of our buildings, at least right now that are being built are geothermally heated and cooled. So about a third of our campus is such. Um, and just a little bit of stats about our Career Development Center. Uh, internships, as well as connection with the Career Development Center happens beginning your first year on campus. Um, but also off, uh, off of graduation and your continuation into graduate work, uh, 80 or so percent of our students move on to some sort of graduate work um, related with their careers as well as new careers that are popping up at any time. And my last slide before I share my information is how would you apply to Skidmore? Uh, early decision, which our actually early decision deadline is on Monday for AD1. And then ED2, which is also early decision, is January 15th, as well as regular decision. 99% of our financial aid is need-based aid and merit scholarships for both math and science, as well as music. 
And my information is right here on the last slide. If you scan that QR code, you can also access that. Thank you very much. We hope you'll come take a look at Skidmore College. Thank you, Skidmore College. I would like to remind everyone that you can send questions over to our panelists using the Q&A button on your menu there. Please feel free to send those over at any point in time. Our next presenter will be St. Vincent College. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I, I thank you for being with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, St. Vincent College is a liberal arts institution, but no, we do not force anyone to be um, liberal arts or we don't force anyone to be in a religion. We take any and all religions um, or those with no religion. St. Vincent College is a very small uh, college, so we do have 220 acres of land that we use. Um, we only use 30 acres of those for our day-to-day -day athletics and academics and, and residential areas. Um, we have 1,500 undergraduates on campus with an additional 200 graduates, so a little over um, uh, 1,700 or 1,800 uh, students on campus at a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we do have a very small faculty to student ratio, so 11 to 1. Uh, the biggest class size that students will endure at St. Vincent College is about 22 students. 93% uh, of all of our faculty members do hold a PhD position or PhD degree, I'm sorry. Um, but all of our faculty do have experience in the field. Um, and that does help students get internships, interviews, and get their foot in the door of some company or some business when they graduate, which I'll tell you about in a second. Um, at St. Vincent, we do have 60 plus majors and minors. We are always adapting and always adding on as we speak. We added on five majors this um, past fall um, as business management, business marketing, um, just to name a few. Uh, we do have 24 double N double NCAA sports um, like football or soccer, lacrosse, tennis. Um, but if it's okay if you do not play a sport, uh, we do have intramural sports, so if you do want to play a sport, but you don't want to play at the D3 level, that is fine with us. We do have um, all of our varsity sports are intramural sports from the addition of um, cakeball and spikeball. So if you do want to play a sport, just let one of us know. Um, we do have 50 or we, uh, we do have 50 plus clubs and activities. Um, every year at the beginning of the semester, we do have a club fair and students are encouraged to join and walk around and see the different clubs and activities that we do offer at St. Vincent. Um, if there is something that you would like us to get started that we do not have at St. Vincent, it's very easy to start a club or an activity. Um, all we ask is that we have 20 student signatures and a faculty moderator and you have yourself a club. So whatever it is that you have done in high school that you would like to transition over to college, just let us know and we will help get that started for you. Um, so everyone at St. Vincent does get a merit-based scholarship from us. Right, so a merit-based scholarship, we look at your, um, your, your curriculum, we look at your GPA, and we look at either your test scores or your test optional option, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, our merit-based scholarships are different from the FAFSA or financial aid. Each of our merit-based, our merit-based scholarships range from seventeen thousand dollars to twenty-six five. So at the very low end, you're guaranteed seventeen thousand dollars to go to, to St. Vincent. Um, we are test optional. So if you do not want us to see your test scores or if you do not have test scores, we ask all individuals to write a one page, brief page paper about themselves. Who are you as an individual? And we will accept that as your test optional option. To apply to St. Vincent, we do have our own application online and we do accept the common application. Um, so whatever you feel as though you is best way for you to apply, just let us know. Um, if you do apply before December 1st, we will waive your application fee. So you don't need to worry about an application fee from us. Um, and once we get all the materials for your application, our turnaround time is 10 days. So within 10 days after we get all the materials you hear from us. Um, like I said, our merit-based scholarships are different from 
FAFSA as well as other grants. So once we get a uh, completed FAFSA, we can give you a full breakdown of um, your financial aid and how much um, we're gonna give you. Um, St. Vincent does have a bunch of study abroad opportunities that are available to you. We have sent students across to Amsterdam, Rome, uh, Guam, Peru, parts of Canada. So if you want to study abroad for a semester, a week, um, a break, whatever it is, we will make sure that you get there and um, get there safely. Normally students only have to pay for their airfare um, and we do have an airport in La Trobe that it's two minutes away from us. So we do have a discount in airfare. Um, if you do have any questions or comments or concerns, please let me know. Um, I will put my information in the chat. Thank you for hearing a little bit about St. Vincent. Thank you, St. Vincent College. Our next presenter is Grinnell College. Thank you, yes. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Grace Robertson Lloyd. I work at Grinnell College. I use she, her, hers pronouns. And I'm also an alum. I graduated in 2016, but I'm originally from New Jersey. So if you have questions about the transition to Iowa, where Grinnell is located, please feel free to ask. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about Grinnell College, which is another small private liberal arts college. We're located in a small town in Iowa with 10,000 citizens in the town, but it is a college town. It has a bowling alley, an art center. It has great restaurants and the maker's lab is downtown and service opportunities and work opportunities for our students as well. Now, Grinnell is a small school with 1,700 students, but it is incredibly diverse, which always surprises people, especially considering our location in a smaller town in a more uh, rural part of the United States. 25% of our students are domestic students of color. 15% of our students are first gen or first in their family to go to college or university. And we're actually the seventh most international liberal arts college in the United States with 20% of our students coming from outside of the US and non-US citizens. We are a school with 60 different languages spoken on campus and we're actually a 93% out of state students. And so you really do feel that diversity on campus because you're living with your fellow students, you eat in the dining hall with them, you really are together as a community. And so having a small community here at Grinnell, being a small student body population, means that students really do get to share who they are and all their wonderful and different identities with each other. When it comes to academics at Grinnell, we do things a little differently than a lot of other colleges because we have an open curriculum. So if you've heard of an open curriculum, it basically means that there are no general education requirements. There is no core curriculum requirements at Grinnell. There is only one required class that students take in their first semester, first year, and then outside of that, they can take what they want. There are requirements within a major, but students don't need to declare a major until the end of their second year. So they have two years to just explore. So it's great for students that have no idea what they wanna study and wanna take their time figuring it out or for students that know exactly what they wanna study so they can start right away taking those classes. The other big thing with our curriculum is that one required class is really a skills-based class. It is teaching students how to read, write, do research, citations, and present at the Grinnell College level. We have so many students coming from very different educational backgrounds. And so that one required class, which is called the tutorial, takes place during that first semester and is designed to make sure students have the skills they need to be successful over the rest of their four years at Grinnell. And then the big thing is that every student is assigned three advisors from day one, an academic advisor, so that that professor is actually the person who teaches the one required class. And then you also get a career advisor starting from day one, so someone who starts thinking about post-grad as a first-year student. And then students also get a student life advisor. So someone that lives in the dorms is a current student and is there to make sure that you are acclimating okay. Now, when it comes to uh, post-grad and some of the other opportunities such as off-campus study and research, we have a lot of students engaging with off-campus study in particular because Grinnell makes it really accessible and affordable. So any student who receives merit or need-based scholarships from Grinnell, their merit or need-based award travels with them. So it's portable on their program and credits transfer back so they can graduate on time, which is great too. And so that's why more than 70% of our students are able to study abroad either for a semester, for a year, or for a short-term program through course embedded travel before they graduate from Grinnell. 
research is embedded into every single department, but for students that want to go a little deeper with their research, they can actually do advanced research projects starting the summer after their second year. So this is basically graduate research at the undergraduate level. We really emphasize that for students because we believe that having the professional development of working with a professor and then having to culminate your research and present it in front of other people, that is a really important skill to have. And so that's why we offer those advanced research opportunities. And it results in our students getting into some pretty awesome places. So like you see, 88% of our students are accepted to their first or second choice graduate program. And we are seventh in the nation for PhD productivity. Um, so we're really, really proud of those statistics and how our students are getting into some amazing places after they graduate. Now, when it comes to admission and financial aid, um, the big thing to know is that we are one of very few schools that actually meets 100% of the demonstrated financial need for all students with no loans. So we basically now meet with only grants and work study instead of including loans. And we are need blind for all US citizens and permanent residents, meaning that the ability of a family to pay does not influence our admission decisions. We actually can't even see that information. That's how we're able to give out more than $65 million in financial aid each year to our students, to 1,700 students. So it is a significant commitment that we have. And we are a highly selective institution. We have about a 10.5% acceptance rate overall between early decision and regular decision. So it is a competitive school. So we like to say that the hard part is getting accepted, not affording it once you do. And we make that possible with our financial aid policy. And much like my colleagues, we accept either the Common App or the QuestBridge application is the other application that we accept from students. And we are free to apply to. We have no supplement. We really want it to be as accessible as possible. And we do mostly give out uh, our, our financial aid through need-based awards, but we also do have a merit scholarship program that also is competitive. But in general, with both admission and with merit scholarships, it is holistic review, meaning everything you submit counts towards your application and whether you are admitted, receive a merit award, et cetera. And with that, uh, I just wanna say thank you so much for letting me present and all of us present. Feel free to reach out to me if you have questions and I'll also put my contact information in the chat. Have a good day. Thank you, Grinnell College. Our final presenter is Villanova University. All right, well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for, again, taking time out of your day to chat with me. My name is Erica Woods. My pronouns are she and her, and I am Associate Director of Admission for Villanova University. As I mentioned before, super excited to chat with you about Villanova. So let's go ahead and get started. So Villanova University was founded back in 1842 under the order of St. Augustine. We are the only Augustinian university in the nation. We are located just outside the city of Philadelphia. It's only 12 miles west of the city. Um, and I love our location because I think you have the best of both worlds. You have your very much on-campus suburban feel where it is a very true suburb. So I love being in the rural environment sometimes, but that's just not everybody's cup of tea. We are definitely a true suburb and you're located next to the second largest city on the East Coast. Um, I currently live in Philadelphia and commute out to Villanova every day for work. So it's very accessible. If you're not familiar with where Philadelphia is, it's a wonderful location just two hours south of the city of New York and also about three hours uh, north of Washington, D.C. So you're right in the middle of wonderful opportunities all around. But bringing it back to campus, uh, so Villanova, again, as I mentioned, is the only Augustinian university. We were founded under the order of St. Augustine. And I bring that up not just because it's a great history lesson, but primarily because it really talks about what it means to be a student on our campus. And it all goes back to three Latin words that you see in our school seal. They are veritas, unitas, and caritas, which translates to truth, unity, and love. So veritas, describes our academic philosophy, which means that you are seeking your truth about who you are, who you hope to be, and your truth about the world around you. When we say unitas for unity, the word that you will likely hear the most often at Villanova is the word community. We have a very tight-knit community first mindset here at Villanova. Many students might um, thrive in a competitive environment and that's wonderful. Ours is more of a collaborative space where you are expected to care for each other and think about one another. 
Additionally, we have a strong belief in diversity. As a mission-driven and social justice-driven institution, we want this to be a space where students of all genders, all sexuality, all religious beliefs, all racial and ethnic backgrounds can feel at home here. After all, Villa Nova translates to new home, so this should be a space where everybody feels at home. Lastly is caritas, which means love. St. Augustine also believed that in all that you do, you should lead first with love and kindness. One remarkable thing that I hear every time somebody visits, they always say how everyone on campus is so nice. It's just a running joke that I hear all the time. Also, we always say that Villanovans will hold the door for you, which is funny, you know, it's just one of those things that you just notice where if you're coming up to a building, they will stop and hold that door for you. That's just embedded into our culture. Caritas also translates to charity. Villanovans definitely show our love through our charity. In fact, our most popular student club on campus is our student-run Special Olympics, and we have the largest one in the world. Our students contribute over 250,000 hours worth of service every single year. This just embedded into the culture of Villanova that you are supposed to give back. Majority of our students are participating in some form of community service. So there you have it, truth, unity, and love really sum up what it means to be a Villanovan. And it truly does come from our foundings. However, when we were founded back then, we only had about 14 students, so we're a little bit bigger now. We have 6,500 undergraduate students, which again, I think is that perfect Goldilocks size, where it is large enough to have over 250 student clubs, 24 Division I athletics, many things to do, lots of activity, but small enough that you don't feel like you're just a number. Average class size, only about 23 students. And that stems across our four different undergraduate colleges. Transitioning quickly over into the academic, um, the academic piece, we do have four undergraduate schools and colleges on our campus. And when you are applying to our institution, there is no general admission. You are selecting one of the four schools and colleges that you see listed here on your screen. And I can promise you that what, whatever you're doing, you're going to be learning from the best of the best. A lot of students will ask, okay, well, what is what percentage of the classes are taught by teaching assistants? And that number is actually zero. All of our classes will be taught by professors and all of our professors are gonna be the top in their field. The overall majority of our professors have the highest degree that is possible in their field. So I'm promising you that you will be, you'll have lots of wonderful interactions with your professors, because again, we have a strong belief in that community mindset here. I do wanna talk a little bit about the application process as well. As many of my colleagues mentioned, we are also on the Common App, so that makes it very easy for you to apply to all of us. Um, our first deadline has already passed, which is November 1st. However, our final deadline is January 15th, and that is our regular decision as well as our early decision two deadline. So you do have a little bit of time if necessary. Um, we do have a supplement as well, so I do want to highlight that, um, so that is something that will be expected of you. Now, one thing I do want to leave you with um, is everybody always asks, you know, why Villanova? My favorite thing about Villanova is truly that community. I really want to highlight that. Um, we are a space that cares about the whole of you. It's not just about the work that you produce. We are, we're expecting that you're going to be engaged in your local community, that you're going to be doing things on campus and being busy, but also that you're taking care of yourself. And I love that about Villanova. I just want to put that out there that we are that institution. Also, here is my email. So if you do have questions or concerns, don't be afraid to reach out to me and let me know. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Villanova University. I would now like to welcome all of our panelists to join me on video as we have time for a brief Q&A. Awesome. Uh, my first question to you all is, what advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? Uh, feel free to respond in the order you presented. I would um, offer a little quick advice of uh, start a little bit earlier so you have some time to kind of check things out and see a variety. Uh, see the small, see the urban, see the rural. Give yourself a little bit of time to um, get on to campuses. And now, you know, now that schools are opening a little bit more back up, uh, 
take advantage of their virtual options. Colleges have really had, colleges and universities have really had to tune up their virtual games. So uh, feel free to, to start that direction as well. I'll also advise many students to, um, as, as we just mentioned, ask for help. Um, you're not going to be able to do this on your own, and you do have wonderful supports, whether in your school or maybe even in your families, that can help you through this process. So please have someone help you, um, because you're not going to get through this on your own. <laughs> Yeah, I would say um, reach out to your admission counselor. Like that's like our, our job title has counselor in it because we're here to work with you and support you and try to help as best as we can. So if you have questions, don't, I mean like, yeah, of course you can use Google and stuff like that, but know that we're here to answer those questions. So always feel free sending an email, giving a phone call um, and, you know, reaching out to us directly. And it's also good because it puts your name in our heads. And so that can help you in the admission process, depending on if a school has demonstrated interest or not. So there's a lot of reasons to reach out to your counselor. I think just to add to kind of what my colleagues from across the other institutions have uh, mentioned is that you're going to find a lot of institutions offering very similar uh, services and opportunities and academic experiences. And it all really comes down to a matter of personality and fit. Um, I know that the University of Toronto isn't for everyone, right? And I encourage you to explore it deeply and widely and make sure that you're finding someplace that feels right to you and make sure that you do that research ahead of time so you don't show up to an institution and start feeling oh no, what did I do? And so really taking your time and taking that junior or senior year to explore your options is crucial uh, to finding a good fit. Do we have anyone else? All right, so my next question is, what is one myth you would like to debunk about the college admissions process? I can go ahead if that works. Um, we, we're located in Canada. So one thing that we hear often is that we have a quota for international students. The answer is no, we don't have a quota for international students. You wanna accept as many folks as you can from wherever they're applying from. Um, and our application process is very kind of strictly grades-based. And so as long as you're aiming for your highest marks, we kind of uh, just try to admit you on the basis of that. Um, I guess I can go next if that's okay with anyone. Um, so we are St. Vincent College and one of the rumors that we get or myths is that you have to be Catholic or um, have a religion to go to St. Vincent, and that is not true. Um, St. Vincent uh, accepts anyone from any different background or any culture or religion. So just because you have a different from a different religion, I apologize, um, it doesn't um, mean you can't apply. Um, we take anyone and everyone from uh, any background, so it doesn't hurt to apply. for us oh, oh go ahead no go ahead hey, John, you can go ahead okay so i think for us a myth about our writing supplement we ask you to write on a great book and a lot of people think they need to write on frankenstein or pride and prejudice um and you don't you can write on any book that you believe to be great. And some of the best essays that I've read this year have been on childhood books like Ender's Game or um, somebody wrote on Akira, which is a manga. And so we really do look for those different and unique things because we really want to see how you think and what you believe to be a great book. So I think that is one myth that comes out of our uh, application process is that your writing supplement on a great book has to be something that you read in like AP Lit. Um, one myth that I want to say that's not specific to Villanova, but I think is something that 
for all colleges and universities. Um, I always like to highlight that we are the office of admission, not the office of denial. Um, we're trying to admit you. Um, I know a lot of times students are just thinking that, you know, oh my goodness, I just don't want to get denied, I want to get denied. Please know that we're on your side. You know, we're really doing our best to not just not to find you know, reasons to deny you. We're really trying to find all the things that are wonderful about you to make sure that you'd be a great fit for our institution. So just keep that in mind when you are um, when you are applying and when you're speaking with your admissions counselors at your respective schools. We're truly on your side. Sarah, did you want to go? I know you had unmuted before. You can go if you want. I was just going to mention that sometimes there's the myth out there that one particular thing is going to make the big difference in the application. And it's not. It's a combination. No matter whether you're a big university or small college, uh, it is, it, it, it's a combination of things. It's not the college essay is going to, you know, make the admission piece. It's, it's the combination of what you're doing inside the classroom, who you are as part of the community, as well as your writing. So it's, it's a combination of all of those pieces, not just tests, not just one thing in. Um, and, and the other thing is, if you're looking at colleges, get to know what their priorities are. Um, get to know what, what matters to them most. Some care about demonstrated interest and if you visit them, some don't. Um, so it's kind of make that checklist as you go of what matters to those colleges that are on your radar. Yeah, I feel like our group has done great myth busting, so I don't really have that much to add, except um, the only thing I would say is just um, like sometimes people talk about how you just get this gut feeling that this is the right school and you know, and you're like, this is the perfect fit. This is the school for me. And some people like don't get that or they get that about multiple schools. And I guess I just don't want people to, especially in this very stressful process, to feel like um, something is wrong with them if they they like multiple schools or if they can't go early decision or you know whatever that feeling is and just go with what feels right to you but know that things are going to turn out okay and you're you know like everything's gonna work out and all of the stress will be worth it in the end and um, don't don't get too bogged down in the fact that maybe you don't know what the perfect school is right now um, it takes time and you'll get there so Awesome. And I have my final question is for everyone. What is one thing you would like students to remember about your college or university? Do you want us to go in the order that we presented? Does that work for you? Go ahead, Sarah. Uh, with, with, I'll, sure, I'll start. Sorry to mean to jump in, guys. Um, with Skidmore College, I think we are an environment that is uh, small, but also part of a larger community. And that creative thought does matter, whether you're interested in the sciences or business or the arts, uh, Skidmore might be a place that you'd like to look at. So thanks very much. Um, I can jump in. Uh, the University of Toronto, we're located in one of the most diverse cities in the world, and we're right in the heart of the city, as you can see right behind me. So if you are looking for access to a big city feel, I think we would be a great choice for any student who wants access to anything like that. Um, I'll go. Um, I'll just reiterate sort of what I said earlier that again, Villanova University is the type of, if, if you're looking for a school that really does value community and really does value sort of having people that support you and collaborate with you, like, you know, even small things, like if you're not eating well, if you're having mental health issues or having all sorts of concerns, we're the kind of place that truly cares about who you are as a person outside of just your work. Um, we're also a very social justice driven institution. So if you're a type of student that you know, really loves doing service work, really loves to give back, is really, you know, the one that's kind of leading the charge uh, for any sort of social justice rights or things of that nature. You'll definitely find your home here at Villanova. Our students are definitely advocates. 
Um, we are an inclusive space and we value inclusivity here. Um, so if these are sort of things that really relate to you and who you are, then I would definitely encourage you to consider Villanova. Yeah, I would just say um, for Grinnell, I mean, I think if you're a student that wants to be in a really intentional place with students, literally just from everywhere, like more than 50 countries, all 50 states, all different backgrounds and identities, like Grinnell is a great school for that. And because it's intentional, students are choosing Grinnell for Grinnell College, right? Um, and that I think makes a big difference, like not necessarily for the city it's in, but for this, this education, this experience and what you get out of it. And so I would say that intentionality is something that I think makes Grinnell a really active and engaging community. And it makes it so that people are excited to interact with each other and share their stories and listen. And it makes such a difference in the classroom, on the weekends. It makes such a difference in terms of what clubs and organizations and events are happening. And it just makes it a very fun experience for four years to be in a place where everybody wants to be there. So that's what I'd say. St. Vincent is a, a place of opportunities and there are many different opportunities available for you. Um, just like my colleague said, you know, there, there is a, every, uh, the uh, St. Vincent isn't a place for, you know, everyone, but St. Vincent definitely is a place that will give you opportunities and that has opportunities, whether it's, you know, trying out different majors, trying out different sports, or studying abroad, St. Vincent does have a, a lot of things that it can offer you and I want to say about St. John's College, if you are to remember one thing, is that we um, study the great books and we are a great books program. And we teach you how to think, not what to think. And even though we have two campuses, we are one college and you can travel between the two of them at any point in your time with us. Well, thank you all for sharing with us today. We are out of time, so I'd like to share my screen with everyone just one more time and go over a few final remarks. So thank you to our panelists and thank you to our guests who are able to join us today. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back on the schedule and sign up for more sessions today. And you'll be able to find the recording for this session as well as all other session recordings at striveskin.com slash Westtown. Thank you all for joining us and hope you have a wonderful afternoon.